Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Boone Builds. It is early Wednesday morning here for me, and it is late Wednesday evening for Wes and James, right? Yeah, yeah. it's six o'clock over here. <laughs> six o'clock in Denmark. Y'all are at the Lego headquarters, I'm assuming. Yes. Yep. You're you're in your office, your your product design office. Yeah. Like okay. From our desk. <laughs> Everybody, I'd love to introduce Wes and James. Wes Talbot, how long have you been with Lego? Uh, so I've been with Lego for eight years. Um, started out with the Elves line and since then worked on a lot of different stuff. Uh, and I try to dip into ideas as often as possible. So I guess that's why we're here. <laughs> awesome. And James May, everybody. James May, how long have you been working for Lego? Uh, I've been working at Lego for about a year and a half, so I'm pretty fresh. I started in Chris 3 and one and right now I'm working in Friends. Awesome. And Wes, you said something interesting. Oh, my goodness. We've got uh, Jake Sadovich is in the live chat. Aiden is here. Brickman Mosaics Art is here. Uh, Omar, welcome. Jake Sadovich, everybody, is the uh, fan designer for the Ship in a Bottle. Uh, so oh. he is is in our live chat today, as he often is. Um, so if you're watching, thank you for joining us. Wes, you mentioned something interesting. You said you like to pop into ideas as often <laughs> as possible. Can you What can you tell us about what that means? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I'll try to keep the long story short, but uh, I love ideas. It's very near to, uh, dear to me. Um, it kind of got me back into Lego out of my dark age. I uh, was doing stuff for Kuso at the time. So I'm pretty much always around the project. I'm not necessarily always assigned to an ideas model, but always keeping an eye out on what's uh, what's in review or what's even gaining momentum on the website um, just to see what what's happening. And then if there's something that I think is really cool, then I'll uh, reach out to Sam and be like, hey, uh, maybe consider me for that one. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, what's your experience with that, James? You you typically work on which team? Um, so, yeah, I, I work on the Friends team, but um, at the start of the typewriter, I was working in Creator 3 and 1. And yeah, ideas being, you know, it's, it's quite, uh, yeah, it's quite good to work on an idea set. So it's always kind of people emailing Sam, the, the design manager, being like, hey, can I, uh, can I work on an ideas model, please? Um, and but but yeah, he I I sent one like a couple of months in to um, me starting working at Lego, and he was like, yeah, sure, just yeah, uh, we have got this typewriter coming out. Do you want to work on it? It's like, well, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, that, that, that was pretty big for me because I well at the time was working on like this, this model that was like 150 bricks. So then to jump straight from that into something that's like 2,000 elements, it was like, oh, <laughs> okay. So that was uh, that was a big a bit of a big shock, but. Uh, no, yeah, it was a, it was a good challenge. Uh, awesome. So uh, I found it interesting that in this set, because um, we got to dive into the typewriter. We're going to talk about the typewriter. I want to hear more about you guys as designers and your process. It's going to be great. We got we got Moto. Uh, Moto is in the chat. Le Lego Master Season Two contestant here in the United States. Thanks for being here, Moto. Look forward to seeing you. I actually get to pick Moto up from uh, my local airport this evening because he's coming into town for a, a local Lego event. Bretsky is here, says hello, everyone. Hey, everybody in the live chat. Thanks for being with us. We are talking about the Lego Ideas typewriter. And um, this thing is, is beautiful. I love sand green. Sand green is one of my favorite colors in Lego. Um, I have loved watching the journey of like almost you know, next to no pieces being made in sand green to now just starting to discover, you know, pieces uh, that are now made in sand green. And um, there's a lot of new pieces that I noticed in this, pieces that are new in that color. Um, it's beautiful. I love it. And I had such a good experience building it. And I wanted you two to know that. What would you say, just off the bat, what's your favorite thing about this model? I would say it's the sound, like when you press down on a key, like the ka-chunk sound, like that's so accurate to like typewriters. Like, so again, like the mechanical noises was like, it, it really like brings brings out like the authenticity of it, I think. I'm, I'm, 
I'm like being a doofus here, trying to move my microphone closer to it so that you can hear it. I, d I don't know how I didn't plan for this. Listen, okay, here we go. Let's see if we got this. Um, can you hear if I go like this? Yes. Isn't that isn't that so good? It's it sounds like it sounds like in a, like a a real typewriter. Hold on. We're going to take just another moment to appreciate that because it's brilliant. If I was looking for if I was if I was producing a video and I was looking for audio files for foley art to be the sound of a typewriter in uh in a film shot where uh the audio had been lost from the stage of the typewriter i would use it it sounds perfect it's so good did you there are i feel like there are a lot of little things with this set are there uh, are there things like that so let's take the sound for example did you set out and say this thing has to sound like a real typewriter or did you come upon those things serendipitously? The latter, yeah. Yeah, the latter. <laughs> I would say we just lucked out in that Lego happened to sound that way <laughs> just from the functions. So. But I think it's because, like, I'm not saying it has, like, the same uh, exact mechanism, but because it has the similar mechanical mechanisms, it's going to sound the same because it's kind of doing the same action. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the other thing that I think is a similar experience is the way when you press when you press the keys there's the carriage moves obviously which is incredible and i'm going to take the carriage off in a minute and show everybody kind of a, li a little peek into the inner workings of this thing so stick around for that but um i i just want to zoom in here and show you that it's not just that the carriage moves and you'll have to you'll have to point out you guys if i if i've like done anything wrong here i had i wasn't <laughs> sure like but when you click now i've gone a little bit too close when you when you click a key not only does the carriage move after but it also has this like slight move at the beginning of the stroke did you see that little like and then it and it's it's that to me seemed so vintage typewriter and i don't know why and it's like something i never would have thought of but i was like yes it like it does this little jiggle as you're pressing the key down and then it moves over it advances a character as you release the key um anyway just those little things really blew me away i thought it was really wonderful um how did you end up on sand green i mentioned the sand green what what uh what led you that direction uh, yeah, we had a couple different options. Um, we looked at, what did we look at? Brown, dark gray was the original submission. Um, dark red. Dark red, dark orange. I think that was it. Yeah. yeah. All, all kind of vintage -y natural colors that you would find. Like Black is also an obvious one, but we, we didn't want to do black because the piano had just recently come out and is you could say a similar vein of model. And we wanted the contrast in like the, the keys area uh, because it's gonna it's gonna be quite dark there. If you have like a brighter color, then you could like that bit really stands yeah. out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we had all those different options. Um, and then we just had a meeting with Steve and talked about it. And we all kind of agreed that the sand green was good. Um, he had also done a model that was in that color um, for the same project. Um, so he was already thinking that anyway. Let's talk a little bit about Steve. Uh, so without Steve's submission, let me see. If, oh, look at those two guys. <laughs> There's a that's a that's a fine photograph right there. We'll we'll come back to that in a moment. But um, in here we've got a picture of. So this is Steve. Steve Guinness. Where's Steve from? UK. Yeah, he's he's English. And uh, what was the experience like working with Steve? That was good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we had a few meetings with him. Um, of course, it was all over. It's mostly over um, like online meetings at the time because it was uh, yeah mid-2020. Um, but he actually had an opportunity to come over. He, he just happened to be going to Bill and uh, to go to Lego Latin. So yeah, we invited him into the office, uh, have a look at like 
the state of the model there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty good experience. And then there was um, some like key design decisions that we then, yeah, we, we got him in on, got his inputs um, so that he had like, yeah, the, this role in is part of the design process. Yeah, I think the keys is one that comes to mind as like a major uh, decision that like in the ideas design team, we were debating whether or not we wanted to add um, numbers and punctuation to the keys. Um, mm. And it was kind of split kind of 50-50 for the longest <laughs> time in the, in the design team of the accuracy of having the numbers. Because uh, normally on a typewriter, you'd hold the shift button and then hit whatever number and then you would get the numbers instead of the letter. Um, but we also felt like in the spirit of Lego, like, wouldn't it be great to have an entire set of tiles that's just the alphabet? Um, so eventually, like, uh, we, we had that meeting with with Steve and we're like, look, we can't decide, should we have the extra detail or should we be more Lego and systematic and just have a, an alphabet set? And and he agreed that we should, we should go with the, yeah. the alphabet set. And what do you think about the um, the the style of this typewriter? And I'm going to bring it back up here so that everyone can see it. Is this heavily influenced by a specific typewriter, or or would you say it's influenced by the design of a lot of different typewriters? Do you understand my asking? Yeah, so it wasn't based on one specific brand. We had a rough era um, where we wanted it to be from like more kind of, I guess like 30s-ish. 30s, yeah. um, but it was mainly so that the function could be designed first and then the body built around it. Because if we had to stick to a specific style and the function didn't fit in that body, then it's like, well, we have to compromise on the function to suit the style of typewriter. So things like um, the what you call the the ink ribbon spools, mm -hmm. like them being raised up. That's like there's no real typewriter that had that, but it's by putting that there, we can fit the functions inside. But also, it looks like a nice kind of like Art yeah. Deco 1930s detail. Actually, um, I have seen the typewriter. Like, I think I same with the um, the curve on the front. So. That was kind of coming from the fact that a lot of typewriters have this giant curve that all of the the hammers or, or key key bars um, rest in, and we don't really have the perfect like concave curve to get that. So uh, we actually originally didn't have those bows. It was just we tried to build that curve, um, and then we realized, wait, this piece like is the closest thing we can possibly find to that broad curve. Um, and then I was looking around at some of our reference and I saw a few designs that did have these like embossed detailing on the top panel. And I, I think that's actually where I saw something similar to yeah. just under the spools. Sometimes they did have uh, raised up parts where like, yeah, they, they had, I guess, sunken areas where there was less mechanism underneath and stuff like that. Um, so just emulating that look um, kind of a give and take with the, the functionality versus the design of it. Yeah, so splicing them all together, we could get, you know, something that evoked a 1930s typewriter without it being like, oh, yeah, that's a, like, like Corona. Oh, I don't want to say Corona. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a specific brand. Yeah, specific yeah. brand, yeah. Yeah, and I think yeah. also the, the round keys was a big part of the era because we found that, like, most typewriters that had the perfectly round keys were from around the 30s. So yeah. we looked at a lot of different typewriters from then, but... We also got some actual physical typewriters that one of our colleagues, Matt Boyle, lent us because um, he's a big typewriter fan um, that were more modern just so we could see like the functions of it and how mm. it worked and everything. So yeah, we were also out. influenced by like like uh, the whatever the platen bar. I can't remember the name of that <laughs> thing. The big shiny silver bar. <laughs> um, yeah. And is Steve, is Steve uh, a typewriter collector, a typewriter enthusiast? Um, or did I, I he mean, just happen to think it would be fun to make a? If I remember correctly, I, I think I read that he got more when he started with the idea. Oh right, okay. Yeah, like I, I think I remember, remember reading on a blog that you'd have to ask him to get the yeah. exact <laughs> details, but I, I, I'm pretty sure he like had the idea of doing the typewriter, and then he like looked into and bought one to see how it worked. Hmm. Um, so it might be yeah, kind of a similar. 
thing to us where yeah. <laughs> I didn't know much about typewriters before working on this project and then like really dove in deep once we got assigned to it. Yeah, I, I bought a couple at like junk shops, like back when I was a student, but I wasn't, I couldn't like tell you like all the different bits and how it actually functioned until, yeah, start working on this. Okay, so that's a good segue to, um, I wanna ask a question about some of the functions, mm -hmm. but I also wanna take another moment just to welcome people in the chat. Cody O is here, welcome. Stingbrick, Stingbrick5 says, hi everyone. And I saw Bretsky said, the function of the carriage is incredible. One of my favorite builds this year. Thank you very much, Bretsky. So, um, James, you said that you spent a little more time working on the carriage. Is, yeah. And, and, and that function, is that correct? Yeah. So things like the like the paper rolling um, to like get like physical paper to, to spill through. Um, and also, yeah, like linking it up to the, the gearbox um to like get the bit to move along all right so we'll let's take a look at that gearbox because i think we can see it if we take the carriage off um zoom in just a little bit here there we go if i haven't emphasized this enough the 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 function on this thing just blew me away so i'll i'll show you again when you press the keys if you haven't had a chance to see this you actually get the carriage moving along. And, oh, you guys here, I was going to ask you, Wes and James, should I pull out the, the paper and put it in the, in the typewriter? I, I, I couldn't decide last night whether I was going to remove one sheet because I'm not going to remove all, you know, I'm not going to remove all the sheets. So then is it like, do I, do I remove just one sheet and everybody out there in the world is going to have this book with one sheet removed <laughs> or or should i consider leaving my my book intact i don't know if there's any merit to that you, you can always photocopy it i guess <laughs> yeah it, well it fits a5 paper so yeah. you can yeah just put another sheet of paper in is that all right i'll I'll, like... I'll get another piece of sheet of papers from somewhere uh, here's um this is a is it half a can this work yeah, it should work. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> here we go, everybody. So here's the this is folded. This is a a US letter size paper folded in half. And and it works. Wow. And we'll lift up this. What is this called? Uh we've forgotten. Yeah. Or that's that's what you um you you say um you know it's a funny thing in the typewriter world that actually doesn't have a name um there's a that's a that's a free one from boone to you um, <laughs> you can use that in the future um so we can roll the paper through brilliant love it it this is one of those lego models that you glance at it and it doesn't look like lego um which i just think is unreal so we can push the carriage over and as we type for anyone who didn't see it before and now i've zoomed in too far but uh as i type we're gonna get that carriage moving across like that i i just think it's incredible okay so let's i'm gonna pull the carriage off and we're gonna take a look in here to see if we can get a closer look at how this thing works and the real secret i think is this you can just barely see it here is is that what do you call that piece that it's sort of like a fan blade that kind of is has curved blades on it yeah i know it from alpha team on like yeah. the submarines i think you but... called it a power miner saw yeah I, I, I can't remember <laughs> Was it power? Why is it for Saturday? No, well, like Alpha Team was before that. But or I don't know, I don't know Robo if that Riders, even? Oh, well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Buzz Saw, saw, saw Blade. Saw Blade, is what yeah. I would call it, yeah. So you can see for each, each time a key is pressed, that there's a red bushing in there that runs up and down on the blades of that saw and advances it one portion of a rotation each time the key is released. Has that been done in a Lego set with that piece? Not that I'm aware of, 
But uh, I think it's a good time to say that that is actually not either of our ideas. <laughs> um, so so this this project was definitely a big team thing. Like this is also the first time that James and I have ever worked on a model with another designer simultaneously. Normally it's just one designer per model. Um, but this one was such a big thing that we had both of us on it, but then also like uh, neither of us are really technic experts actually. So, okay. so when it came to things like this, we really had to call in some help. Um, so the, the guy that came up with that, using that piece for that purpose was a guy named Harold, who um, you would maybe know as the guy behind uh, Forma. The, the, oh, absolutely. You know, that fish um, yeah. project we did a while back. So he's like one of the biggest like technically minded designers in the company. Um, so uh, we, we brought him on board essentially when we decided we wanted, we, we had figured out the, the keys, um, getting the, the hammer to go up or the type bar to go up and we'd figured out the, the platen with the, the paper roll, but we hadn't gotten figured out how to link the keys to the carriage. Um, and that's when we kind of brought him on board and asked for his input. And he's got like wild experiments, like yeah. working clocks and things like this all over his desk. Yeah, proper like mad scientist stuff, yeah. just like everywhere. And uh, I think it was only like a day and he came back with something that was working pretty well. And and from there it was like tweaking things like uh, like with the shock absorbers, how much power do we need to push the carriage and, yeah. and tweaking things like that. And then uh, later on in the process, we also brought in a couple um technic designers Olau and um michael that were that really helped us um refine what harold gave us because harold harold's more of a, a concept designer so he right. got the thing working but then in order to get it buildable with instructions uh we got the technic design experts in to help us with that so yeah it was really a, a big team project for, for especially linking those two halves together well, it's incredible, and it seems like it was worth it because it's just, you know, it would be one thing if this thing sat and looked as cool as it does. Like I said, you know, it is a Lego set that if I built this and then put it inside my house on a desk, people could walk through my house and not even think a thing of it, right? It's an, it's an old, cool typewriter sitting there. Um, and there's something, I feel like there's something magic about that and and being able to create that build that with lego pieces um but but it's not just that it also is this like multi-sensory experience right and and it and it just has these little things about it that just do exactly what they feel like they should do with an old an old typewriter um so uh, i'm wondering oh well and i i will just i Please tell who. So who who was the name of the gentleman that came in and helped with the uh, the advance uh, of the character? Harold. Harold. Okay. Popo, I think is how I say his name. All right. Well, um, tell Harold. Tell tell Harold Boone said thank you. Because, <laughs> will do. Because I I honestly um I don't think there are many things I the the hammer is incredible. There's been some sets that I've built recently that had some cool functions. I really liked um the uh the side ejector seat in the ecto one and i i had a similar feeling with these kind of shock shock absorber things and the carriage on this but that blade fan saw blade advancing the carriage one little step each time blew my mind and it's maybe the thing from a lego set of the last number of years that makes me want to like go put it in something ASAP. You know, I, I, I've been thinking about um, amusement park rides or, or, you know, people running their, um, you know, water pails or something like that. I'm like, I don't know what it's going to be, but uh, I loved it and it was an, a great experience. Um, so tell Harold, I said, thank you. Okay. Let's, um, uh, I've seen some questions in the live chat and not particularly about the, uh, the, the typewriter. So here we go, Jonathan, I'll answer, um, one of your questions that is off topic. 
<laughs> we'll, we'll save we'll save the other off-topic questions for another stream. But if you have any questions um, for the team, for uh, any of us, you're welcome to ask them in the live chat. Um, but Jonathan says, question from Boone. What do you think of Disney Pixar Luca movie? Uh, I've, I haven't seen the entire thing. So sorry, Jonathan. I haven't seen Luca. Have you guys seen Luca? Yeah, I have. <laughs> oh, I liked what, it. What did, it Wes, you liked it? Okay. Yeah. I've, I've seen parts of it. I thought the animation was great, but I haven't seen the whole thing. Um, but Bretsky says, was there ever an attempt to have more than one striker moving? Uh, we had it in mind at the beginning, but very quickly realized like just the amount of space taken up by the like the rest of the functionality, and then the the amount of bricks that you need to uh, make sure that that single hammer is stable in there, and it's not going to like work its way out after um, uh, yeah a lot of use. Uh, it didn't seem like it was going to be possible. So we also realized like when we were messing around with the real typewriters that it always strikes in the center anyway. So even if you had multiple, you'd have to find a way to angle the ones on the side of it to strike in the center. So it, it felt like, why are we making it more complicated for ourselves when we can just make the center one go? So Awesome. Okay, so let's, let's dive back into uh, your kind of history with, with Lego. So Wes, we'll start with you just because you're on the left to me um what would you say was like the beginning of your lego journey does it go uh, all the way back to childhood oh be beginning very beginning yeah <laughs> yeah for sure um i think if you want to go that far back my first lego set was the sonar security uh space police 2 theme it was like a little six-wheeled rover with a little trailer that had a uh, like a rocket drone or something like that on it. Um, and I got that when I was like three or four. Um, so, and then I played with Lego all the way through uh, my teen years. And then a little bit before college had a dark age. Um, and then during college rediscovered Lego with uh, when the Lord of the Rings series came out and discovered Cuso and all that and really jumps back in. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so there, there was, there's your first set. So, Wes, you and I actually must be uh, somewhat close in age uh, because my favorite set in those years, and it's hard for me to say now because now I look back and I, I say that my favorite set of all time is Black Sea's Barracuda, but, I, but that, that was when I was maybe, oh, five or six and and it was very shortly thereafter that i took a deep dive into the space sub themes and galactic mediator was the the sort of larger ship that went with these space police two guys do you remember that ship yeah i actually, i didn't have much of the big ones i think i had like the like 999 size of a lot like spireus space police two um Oh, was the other? Uh, what's the white and yellow one? Uh, white shoot, and uh, I normally remember. No. It's, it's got the holographic stickers and the. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, those are Explorians. Yeah. Sorry, you you beat yeah. me. Yeah. So I just had all the small sets, but it, it's funny because I actually got one of the bigger. I can't remember the name of it, but one of the bigger um, wheeled rovers uh, for a birth, my my birthday from one of my friends, um, Austin Carlson. I think he's actually been on your show. Um, got me that a while back. So I'm very tempted to go back through and get all of these high price points that I never had as a kid. Oh, well, isn't that one of the magic of being an adult? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, people ask, sometimes people ask me, you might experience this like, well, what's your white whale like that? What's that one Lego set out there that you've always wanted and never had? And I'm like, I have bought myself the things that I really wanted that I never had. So like there really <laughs> isn't one, but anyway, um, it's a fun thing to talk about for, for people who perhaps aren't in my privileged position. Okay. I'm going to get off that. So Wes, then quickly give us a, a, a quick from childhood to actually working for Lego. What was the story? 
Yeah, so uh, I was in college. I discovered uh, the fan community and Lego Kuso at the time, now Lego Ideas, um, and was super into Lord of the Rings. And uh, I saw that there was like a Zelda project on Kuso at the time. I was like, oh my gosh, this needs to happen. And so then I made my own Lego Zelda um, thing. And that kind of, in the, in the process of designing that uh, ideas pitch project, is what really brought back the the spark for me of building with Lego again. Um, and then after that, I just made everything, all of my portfolio, I was studying illustration. So just did all of my projects focused on a portfolio for Lego and then got a, a freelance gig doing concept art for what would eventually become Lego Elves. And then, so I, I had two trips to Billund from Columbus, Ohio, where I was studying. Um, and in both trips, I realized this place is awesome. These people are awesome. This job is awesome. I want to work here. Uh, but as a model builder, because um, I didn't realize I could even be a model builder. I was, like I said, studying illustration. Um, so then I applied shortly after and was very lucky that they needed someone to be a model builder for the Elves project. Mm. Um, so it really set up kind of perfectly with that and then <laughs> just stuck with that all the way through for four years to the end. And then um, after that, just worked on a lot of different stuff, jumping around like a movie to um, a bit of like a couple skews here and there. Um, so now it's like, I think Harry Potter and ideas are the ones that I tend to try and return to as much as possible and just talk to people. Like, hey, do you have anyone to do that model? No. Okay. I can do it. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Awesome. All right, James, same question. What would you say, like, what was the very beginning of Lego for you? Uh, and then how it it when I was born, um, <laughs> no, um, I, yeah, I do play with the kids. I had like a fire, like fire truck house and like a farm and uh, a couple of those sets. I, Remember, like, first, like, system sets would probably be time cruisers and some, like, brick buckets. I was a big fan of time cruisers because it was just, like, all these crazy parts and you could just build anything you want with it. Um, I could I could talk all day about time cruisers, but I'll skip over it for now. Um, I then got quite into slicers and, like, Robo Riders and Bionicle uh, when I was, yeah, kind of, yeah, six, seven-ish, that kind of age. Um, and then also, I think I did have Star Wars stuff, but I really kicked off with the episode two stuff around, yeah, 2002. Like that was, yeah, when I was like, really like, okay, Lego is like, this is my life now. Um, although saying that maybe around, yeah, when I became a teenager, like a lot of people, I kind of grew out of it. But then when I went back to university, I got the Lego Star Wars advent calendar. And that was like, oh, Lego, it's, this is, like, I remember this, this is, this is great. Why did I give it up? And so when I was a student, I did a lot of uh, LDD, like Lego digital designer models. Cause like I was living in a tiny dorm room. I can like have a Lego collection. So this was a way of me being able to explore Lego without like taking up a huge amount of space. And uh, so I was studying engineering, but then I saw that Lego had an internship program that was more geared towards design, but I was like, I'll just apply anyway. Like, I'm not going to get it, but like, yeah, I'll give, oh, and then I got it. Um, so then I spent a year, um, yeah, working on like front end, like concept stuff, and then also a little bit on Lego dimensions. And then that was like an amazing experience. I was like, okay, this is, this is what I want to do uh, with like my career. So I then finished my engineering degree, then did a postgrad in design so that I had like the necessary skills to like be a proper model design, but like, uh, anyone could be a model designer, but then I think having the product design helps to get to know like user, like mm -hmm. user interfacing and things like that. Uh, so then after that, graduated, reapplied, and then here I am now. Awesome! I love hearing those stories. It's there's so many, so many different stories of how people came to be, you know, working in Lego product design, um, and I love that. And I hope that anyone listening out there. If you're a young person and nobody has told you that you can do this for your career as an adult, it's possible. There are people doing it. Not a lot of people. It's a fairly small percentage of the world's population, but but it is possible. And nobody told me that when I was a kid. Um, so if no one's told you that, it, it is true. 
All right, can it, I say that? Is that allowed for me to say? Oh yeah, yeah for sure. It, it is weird because like when, when you're a kid, it's like it, it's it's with those jobs. It's like oh, I want to be an astronaut. It's like I want to build with Lego. It's like oh, sure you do. And it's like oh, I'm do, I'm doing that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I had no concept that it was when I was a kid. I got these toys. I played with them. I built them. And I had zero concept that it was someone's job to de to design those things, or if if I did, I don't know. It was like magical elves or something. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, I just I think it's important that that young people know that they and and the old people. I guess you, I'm sorry. I don't mean to make it an age thing, but when I was a kid, nobody told me that I could try to become a Lego designer one day. Um, and so, so congratulations, Wes and James, you've made it, <laughs> you've, you've, you've done it. Um, all right. So I mentioned earlier that the, well, let's see, we've got a question from Lego Maddox said, is there anything, this is, this is probably one of those questions you can't or prefer not to talk about, but in case there's something that you, you want to mention, is there anything you wanted to put in the typewriter that you weren't able to put in? Uh... Bell? Uh, yeah, we can talk yeah, about it. Yeah. yeah, so typewriters, they have a bell. Um, we all know this. Um, but obviously, Lego being made of plastic, you can't really make it go ding. You can't like hit something again. Like, that's a thing hitting against metal when it gets to the end of the, the row. So we would have liked to have had that, but it's not possible with Lego. <laughs> Did you did you did you try to think of ideas? Did you try to <laughs> yeah. or like how? We, we, yeah, we looked into we... like we've had a sound brick before, and yeah. like a long time ago. Um, we that was one of the first things we looked into is like, can we get a bell sound recorded on the sound brick? But the amount of time it actually takes to manufacture that and like get it done was like well beyond the deadline for this model. Okay. So, like, okay, that's pretty much the only thing that would have worked, and it's not possible. So. Yeah, yeah. I I would be I'm going to lay awake tonight thinking <laughs> about possible ways to make it ding. Um I mean if you're not a purist, you could probably stick a bell in there and find a way to make it <laughs> ding. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty purist. It's probably going to involve like taking apart a monorail motor or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um but uh it's no, like a anyway. manufactured metal <laughs> somehow. Uh, uh, and uh trevor says i think we talked about this earlier in the stream who chose the final color you said you guys were in yeah, a conversation with the team along with steve well i love it and that's a good segue back to I, I wanted to talk about um some of the new parts in this and this is the first time again i'm not an expert on the parts palette i've i feel like i've got a pretty good grasp of you know what parts have been oh that's not what i meant to put up but was that yours <laughs> all right um anyway let me get rid of this uh, 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 i'm trying to do this one is um there's got to be some pieces in here that are new at least to sand green right so we just got this was first with the porsche yeah yep. and and that was white so how did that go? Was it like, did you guys know that the Porsche was going to happen and you get an announcement like, okay, everybody now you can use this piece or how does that work? Yeah. I think the Porsche was pretty much done when okay. we started on this one. Um, I don't think we had actually gotten test molds of that one in yet. So we still had to borrow some old prototypes from uh, the expert team to see how it would look. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I have. Not... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, like, that's at least for me. Uh, that's one of the things I like to do every time I come into the office is just run to the new elements area. It's also right next to where I get coffee, <laughs> so that also helps. Um, but yeah, I just check out what's all the new test molds that have come in. Um, so we're we're usually try to keep a pretty sharp eye on on all the new parts. So pretty much everyone so knew about it. That is something that's similar to what I imagined. I did not know that there was like a new a, a, a new parts area 
that people could check that out. But I have this imagination that like you guys are, you know, grabbing coffee and, you know, um, so-and-so maybe it's, uh, I don't know who, maybe it's Mike Psyche or maybe it's like, um, uh, Justin Ramson is like, you're never going to, you're never going to believe what we're getting pushed through. Like, does that ever happen? Like, oh, yeah, 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 that's that's very accurate. <laughs> or it'll be they'll, them coming out. It's like, I've got this cool new piece. Do you want to put it in your model? It's like, absolutely, yes. I want twenty of them. <laughs> and there's a there's a little bit of like, hey, if if uh, if we can get this new piece through, we've all got to use it so that it like stays. Right? Is there a little sense of that? Uh, I guess it depends. Um... I mean, everyone, I guess, has a, their own sense of how useful each piece could be. Sometimes you're surprised, like, how long something will last. Um, but, yeah. I mean, yeah, with the with that bow, it seemed quite specific to yeah, um, yeah, to the Porsche. But then, yeah, so it's, it's nice that we've, we have found other uses for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay. And then, I don't know, maybe this... Um, uh, the quarter or the the half two by two triangle tile was is that new in sand green with this set mm, no i, th I think I, I don't know what it was in but that was because yeah we have we have the stock room and then we got the secret stock room with all the new stuff <laughs> um and um you've heard it here folks the stock room <laughs> and the secret uh, stock room um but yeah, I, I don't think that one. Yeah, we we didn't make it at least. Oh, okay. um, Were there any? I know I noticed things through here. Like I was flabbergasted by the one by five plate. Oh yeah, there's, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's one by five plate in there, and I I think maybe it's it's like just like right down here underneath this. You know, no one is ever gonna be able to see it, but I it was like um, I I had no idea, and I I didn't know that was coming. I guess maybe I'd heard some people like talking about it um how long has that been around have i just not noticed it maybe i haven't built enough new sets some a couple other i used it in the video boombox as well and then it was originally made for minecraft i but i'm not sure what minecraft no. um, models it's in but yeah it's, it's like past couple of months it's very very yeah. new that's amazing. I, I, my brain, when I dumped it out, I dumped out that bag. My brain completely accepted it as a one by six in yeah. the pile <laughs> until I needed. And I, and I was looking at the instructions going like, wait a second, wait, uh, that's covering up four studs, but there's only one left sticking out. How does that, how's that possible? Uh, and then it, it, after all, it was a one by five. I couldn't believe it. Um, <laughs> and in future generations, they'll be like, wait there was a time when there wasn't a one by five yeah. um okay were there were there any other parts or uh parts in a new color that you all had to kind of fight for for this set it's amazing how sort of solid uh sand green we've got here but uh, one by one cross hole break? oh yeah. yeah um yeah the one by oh. one cross hole break yeah that's uh this yeah. thing is this thing is amazing. Okay, I'm going to show it. I just pulled two off of the the what is it? Do you call that a hammer? Yeah. I feel like this is a Lego piece that I have wanted before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and never had it. I've like I've had <laughs> I've been building and I'm like, "Oh, man, if only I had this one by one Technic whole brick with the axle instead." So so how did this come up? Y'all y'all were able to get this together for this yeah, set? That was also Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft is on a roll. Yeah, they're they're really okay. good with like thinking of like, okay, what's a really useful element and then just, just making it. Well, they have like the whole slew of novelty Minecraft only elements, and then they have to balance it out with all these amazing like generic building elements. But so yeah, the, the model definitely couldn't have been made without that element. So it came along like just at the right time because yeah. uh, we, we use a lot of them in this model it's like over 100 something yeah. yeah okay we've got a couple of good questions in here martin is here and says hi boone wes and james hi martin hi. Thanks for joining hi. Us. um brickham's den hey brickham's den welcome says uh oh wait i thought this was a different question but hey brickham's den thanks for joining us ant bandit says do designers get to provide any input on marketing for the models they design or is that entirely up to a different department it's 
it's pretty much a different department. Yeah, a different department. Yeah. So, so when you posed for this picture, <laughs> um, was there was there someone like telling you what to do in in the picture? Yeah, uh, yeah. For for that one, it was pretty much like we got an email saying we're going to do this photo shoot. Please wear clothing that looks old. Uh, Trip to the vintage shop. Yeah, uh, <laughs> come at this time. So. But yeah. So this is not what you two typically look like at work. Yeah. Well, I had to undye my hair for that. So like I was really committed to like the time <laughs> period. Wow, yeah. That's I actually thought I think Wes when I first started being aware of you, you had a profile picture with like green hair or blue hair? Me? Um no, no I'm sorry James. I I meant oh, James. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just um I'd have never had hair. And, <laughs> and so yeah, I meant I meant James. My my bad. I just said the wrong name. I I don't have the two of you confused, but my uh, my mouth often says wrong names. Um. So James, I think like you typically have like different colored hair. Is that nah, correct? I, I stick to green, but I'm I'm really bad at keeping up to date with like keeping it green. So like it will be like okay. really vivid green, and then just like really like get faded as it is now. So I was actually like I've seen your profile picture around maybe Facebook or um, yeah. Instagram or wherever. And I've seen pictures of you in Lego related stuff just enough to have been slightly surprised when I saw this picture of you <laughs> with a full head of brown hair. Um, yeah. So you yeah, were, like, you, no, you no. were committed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was like, that, was that day just later like, it was bleached and died again? <laughs> did, uh, did you say a day later? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you say that was out of like, did somebody encourage you to do that? Or did you just feel no, like, I, I, for I, this... I felt that, like, no, no one really dyed their hair back in like, cause that, I say that that was more set in the like 50s, 60s. Yeah. Like, um, and no, no one had green hair back then. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, well, that's great. I love it. Um, and you know, Wes, you look like you look like you're really giving somebody, you know, I just imagine you being sort of like in charge of the newspaper and you're on the phone and you're like, we've got to get these out now, you know, or something like that. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think it's, I think it's hilarious. Okay. One other thing I wanted to mention about this while I have this part of the book open is we've got um, a picture of, is it, is it Thomas or Thomas? Thomas. Yeah. Thomas. Um, is this, this is the first time I feel like I've seen Thomas appearing in this type of lego product you know marketing piece here um was that is that something anybody talked about was was he excited to do this or it was there some point where it was like this makes sense to do and then he actually his signature he signed um, every page of every of the two hundred thousand of these. <laughs> yeah. out. We had him in the factory working day. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's an auto pen. But um, so tell me about that. Where where did that decision come in? Like, hey, let's have Thomas because he's he's fairly newly. Is it CEO? CFO? Owner. CFO owner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think this is, yeah, he, he was interested in, in the project and, um, I think it's his first time kind of interacting yeah, with, uh, yeah. like a project. Um, yeah. And that kind of came about, um, once again, because, uh, a lot of Steve's reasoning behind the typewriter was that he found that old picture of Ola Kerk with the typewriter. Um, and that was kind of his inspiration for it. Um, yeah, that one. so yeah, exactly. So that's, I think it was actually Sam. Sam's idea, Sam Johnson, the creative uh, or the creative lead for the project. I think he was saying, oh, we should try and, or it may have been marketing as well. Mm. I'm not exactly sure whose idea it was, but they're like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could kind of have something similar going on with Thomas to kind of recreate that photo and, and have something that feels cl uh, closer to the family and like, what a great way to like also write a letter to the fans directly from the owner. Yeah, that's cool. Does that does that seem cool to you? Like, does it seem like a little bit special to you to? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Have that? Or okay. Yeah, it was it was it was a bit of a surprise. Like, oh, okay, that's <laughs> wow. Interesting. Cool. Um, and and just generally speaking, before I put this part of the book away, you know, this is something that we didn't get to see in Lego sets when I was young, right? This is a fairly 
I don't know which set was the first to start doing this, but it's it hasn't been 10 years, right? It's been maybe five or or maybe it has been 10 years, but it hasn't been 20 years yeah. of getting this kind of, you know, in-depth look at the the designers, the um uh you know, some of the story behind the model. Um and that that seems pretty special to me and, and pretty cool. And and not everybody so I guess my point is because this is a fairly new thing and it doesn't happen in everything, it, it, it does happen in all idea sets. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. And and some um some of like the now branded 18 plus sets. Yeah. Um so it, it do is this do uh let's see do product designers tend to feel like this is something special and something to like be proud of or are product designers think it's weird to have their pictures in a in a book you know instruction booklet for lego what, what's I mean, the sense I, I you get i guess you could say because martin isn't there because hmm. so martin fink is the graphic designer that um did all the stickers and the prints and things but and i i think he was less keen on it um so he didn't want to be printed in it but i think for me like I, I wouldn't mind if it wasn't in there but i also don't mind that it is i think it's kind of cool that like in some sense you get to be right there like next to steve like and you get to see the hands that the whole thing is passed through i think especially in ideas because it is such a collaborative process um and i mean of course like we're, we're designers we're oftentimes pretty proud of what we do yeah. so it's, it's nice to for people to be able to see like who actually did this and i think also to your point about like telling kids that they can be a designer like uh, if we did this more, kids might realize that a lot sooner and and get more excited Absolutely. about it. I, I think that was actually what made me when they started doing these, um, yeah, putting the designers in the the booklets. I think that's what made me think like, oh, this this is a job that I could do because I would have been yeah university age around then. So that that's what made. So I yeah, I think it's a great thing that they're doing it. Awesome, cool. Um, let's see. This is getting back to some of what we were talking about earlier with the parts, and we may have spoken on it enough to answer Ant Bandit's question. Uh, how does designing brand new parts for a model work? Do designers get uh, get to request new molds often? You, you, I think you talked about that most with um, the Minecraft. So where do they start in identifying like, hey, this would be cool, we need this, and then what? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, though, at least the way I think about it is there's, there's like different needs. So there's like building needs, like why? Ha and that's usually the, why haven't we had this brick before <laughs> scenarios kind of like the one by one with the cross hole. Um, and then there's novelty. Like we need to make this IP related helmet or whatever to be faithful to this character design. Um, so it's pretty much, yeah. Starts with those yeah. needs. And then, yeah, each project will be allocated a certain amount, depending on what it is. Um, and so then, yeah, you can make new elements. And then there's also uh, color changes, which is kind of new elements with existing elements. Um, so then, and also prints, they, they are also part of this pool. So then with the typewriter, uh, with all the different keys, that was, uh, that was a lot of new elements. Uh <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the printed keys. I feel like it's going to be a real shame that they're, they're not... I don't see these prints popping up in a lot of new Lego sets, but I wish that we had them forever so that I could use them <laughs> for all... So I could use them for all kinds of things. You know, I want I want 10 of each letter, and which I, you know, can go to Brickling, but they're going to be... I imagine they're going to be cost, costly to get, but... Um, I love them. They're beautiful. Um, I feel like the three by three round tile is kind of new to me too, but I, I think I've probably seen that before, but these, oh, these pieces are just, they're, they're beautiful. I love it. Um, Brickham's Den said, Hey Boone, Wes and James, not sure if it was already asked, uh, but was there ever any other color in considered as the main color for the typewriter? Yes. You'll have to go back to the beginning of the stream, Rick, uh, 
Brigham's Den and and listen, but it's very interesting. But I I love the sand green. I think it was perfect. I think the sand green was the perfect choice for this. Um, Brickman Mosaics Art says, Wes and James, what gave you the idea to add the silver parts inside the typewriter itself? I don't remember which parts inside the typewriter are silver. Do you know? Uh, what you're I guess about? it's like the like the saw blade. That's that's silver. Molded silver, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, there are some elements on the inside that don't really matter what color they are, right? Is yeah. that is that how yeah. that works, or or is there some intention around like, let's make the stuff you can't see as varied as possible yeah, for exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it reduces search time for elements. If you've got like a big brick pile, if you've got something really bright, then it's a lot easier to spot. Because yeah, we could have made everything black or gray, but then if you've got like a hundred black elements, you can't find one of them. Uh, so anything that you can't see, then we try and make it a bright color. And then so that meant with the typewriter, it's quite open in the top. So um, yeah, it was a challenge picking the right colors that you know, are differentiated enough that you can tell them apart, but then you don't have like a splash of blue, like right there in the middle. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Well, Brickham's Den says, thanks, Boone. I agree. Sand green is the best choice. I think it just turned out great. It's just, it really strikes me as one of the few Lego colors that this type of thing would have actually been, you know, produced in. Yeah. Um, I don't know what this means, but Monica Berry, welcome, Monica, says, hey, Wes, <laughs> how's your RPG going? Oh, I guess she's referring. I play a lot of D&D. &D, so oh, okay. <laughs> it's going very well. Okay, Although, good. Uh, yeah, one of us keeps dying. But uh... <laughs> uh, All right. Well, uh, we're reaching the end of this stream. And I just, Wes and James, I just want to give you an opportunity to is there anything about this model or is there anything about your experience as Lego product designers that you uh, wouldn't want us to leave today without uh, hearing about? Um, I guess I want to say that it was great working with Wes. <laughs> no, um, I think it was, uh, as a new designer, getting to work with Wes was really good as like, yes, like Lego design master, like getting to see him work and everything. It was, it was a great experience for someone who had like just started at the company to see um like this is like the skill ceiling that you could get to one day it was very inspiring as much as he's like too much cringing too much. At him <laughs> saying that. um but yeah it, it, it was it was a great experience to to work in this model yeah and and the same same direction it's like all, all these new people come in and making me scared for my job because they're like <laughs> i remember when i first started i'm not was not at that level so uh yeah i'm gonna be redundant in a couple of years <laughs> well that's a depressing note to end on. <laughs> <laughs> you you heard it here folks you heard it here first everybody wes is on his way out james <laughs> has taken his job i did um, it <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, no, I'm just kidding um wes and james i hope that i have the privilege of meeting you face to face someday in the future um I, you're welcome back here anytime James, you said that you could talk all day about time cruisers, and um, I would love to take you up on that. Let's do it. Oh. Let's do a time cruisers uh, focused live stream someday, oh, we'll and, and, and we'll we'll really uh, we'll really make it a thing. Um, thank you both so much for being with us. Really appreciate your time. Cool. Thanks um, for having us on. Yeah, it's been great. Absolutely, Monica Brickham. Welcome back, Daniels is here cody otley was with us we had jake sadovich in the chat trevor thanks for being with us ant bandit thank you for your great questions martin aiden um you're all awesome dave morgan was here bretsky was here thank you very much to my lovely moderators for keeping the chat safe and fun for all of us um please get out there oh i do have to thank the a full engagement team i should have done this in the first 20 seconds of this video i have to <laughs> thank the a full engagement team for sending along this copy of the typewriter set so that i had the i i i don't this interview would have been completely different if i hadn't had the chance to build the typewriter it was such a pleasure um i hope we talked about all the things you uh, two wanted to talk about because it's, it's just really great and i can't wait to see what you both come up with in the future um and for all those of you out there watching 
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this stream, please click that thumbs up. If you haven't been around Boone Builds and you like what you see, please subscribe. And until next time, go build something amazing.